Let's pray as we look at the second week of Advent, um, looking at joy. Let's just pray. Father, thank you that you speak to us. And you've said that you are building this church. You've established it. You've set it in place. We're on a hill for people to see us. We thank you for that, Lord. And Father, for those who are not sure if this is where they're meant to be, I pray that you would speak to them at this time. That they would hear from you and know that you are calling to be part of what you are doing here. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit, that you speak and we can hear. And just as we were reminded in this last song, the light of the world came down from heaven to earth into the darkness to bring light to us, light and life and liberty, to set us free from sin and darkness, to bring us into the kingdom of our Heavenly Father. Thank you, Father, that we can come into your kingdom because of what Jesus has done for us. And as we begin to remember and be reminded of his birth, that you would help us to set our hearts on you, our minds on you, and do what it is you're calling us to do. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for your leading and your guiding. We just welcome you now, and I ask that you would just use me to bring your words to us now. Amen. Amen. Yeah, we began with joy to the world. <laughs> That's what Jesus is. He's joy to this world. And uh, we finished with light in the darkness, because Jesus came into this dark world to bring his light. So today is the second Sunday of Advent. And as Jill said last Sunday, Advent is a time of preparation for the celebration of the birth of Christ, which we celebrate at Christmas, and the expecting, expectant waiting for the return of Christ at the second coming. And today we're looking at joy. Now, I don't know if we've got these in the right order. I'm not sure if there's a correct order or not a correct order, but this is what we're doing today, joy. So I want us to look at two passages of Scripture this morning, beginning with a part of what Joel used last Sunday, Luke chapter 2, but just verses 8 to 11. And in the same region there were shepherds out in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And an angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were filled with fear. And the angel said to them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is Christ the Lord. Now last week, Jill explained the role of the shepherds, why they were significant, and why the angel appeared to them. They were the ones that would know where that manger was, that the babe would be would would be set in. This morning I want to draw our attention to what the angel said to them as recorded in verses 10 and 11. It says, And the angel said to them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior who is Christ the Lord. Now after the angel got them to stop being afraid, as most of us would be, if we had an angel suddenly appear to us while we're sitting out in a field. He tells them why he has come to them out in their fields. He is bringing good news of great joy for all people. What he is about to share is great news. Don't we all like getting good news? You know, it's far better than getting bad news. Whenever somebody comes up to you and says, listen, I've got good news and bad news. What do you want to hear? Which one do you want to hear first? What do you normally say? For me, I believe most people want to hear the good news first. So it just prepares their hearts and gets them ready. And they're in a good place when they hear 
the, the bad news. Nobody really wants to hear bad news all the time. But most of our newspapers, TV and radio news broadcasts deliver mainly bad news with very few good news stories. Have you ever wondered why they tend to focus on the bad news and not the good news? Good news stories don't tend to grip people in the same way as bad news stories do. Now we live in a fallen world and this seems to be one of the consequences of man's sinful nature. Bad news being preferable to good news. God wants, wants us to change that. He sent Jesus into the world so that we can change that. I think people like hearing bad news because it makes them feel they're in a better place than those people and they feel good about themselves because they're struggling with their, their self-identity or whatever it might be. And when they hear other bad news, they think, well, I'm much better off than that. The angel came declaring he had good news of great joy for all people. The good news of Jesus Christ is to bring great joy to all people. Jesus came into the world to bring liberty from sin and death and eternal life to all people. That is the good news of Jesus Christ. That is the gospel, the good news of Jesus Christ. One of the most well-known portions of Scripture tells us so. John 3, 16 and 17. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. He did not send his Son to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. When we receive Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, we are filled with the joy of the Lord because we receive the deposit of the Holy Spirit. And joy is a part of the fruit of the Spirit, according to Galatians 5, 22 and 23, which says, But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Against such thing there is no law. We receive the fruit of the Spirit, not the fruits, not the fruits of the Spirit, but the fruit of the Spirit. We don't get one or more of these attributes when the Holy Spirit comes to indwell in us. We get them all. Think of it as an orange with its many segments. One fruit made up of many segments. The fruit of the Spirit is like that. Many segments, one fruit. Now, it's not an orange. The Holy Spirit is not an orange. Don't get confused about that. Or the fruit of the Spirit is not an orange. Okay, just to make that sure. Just as Adam didn't bite an apple, he, bought, he bit into some other fruit that doesn't tell us what it is. Okay. So, it's like an orange. One fruit, many segments. Those are all. The fruit of the Spirit is made up of love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Joy is a part of the whole, and our joy comes from being in Christ Jesus. We need to understand there's a, that there's a difference between joy and happiness. Happiness mostly has to do with our feelings and circumstances, where joy has to do with our being, our soul, who we are. It's not determined by our feelings and circumstance. As an example, Many English sports fans have been both happy and sad these past few weeks. If you're a football supporter, you've had a mixed bag of emotions, both happiness and despair over what has happened so far in the Football World Cup. Two good performances and one pathetic performance, according to most pundits. But you're through to the knockout stage of the tournament. So in general, the England football supporters are happy. They're going forward. On the other hand, if you're a rugby supporter, you've gone through a roller coaster ride of emotions during the Autumn Nation series. A narrow loss, a good win, a come from behind draw that almost felt like a win, and then a final dismal performance and loss to conclude the series. 
overall a lot, a lot of very unhappy English rugby supporters. Your happiness can be affected by these sporting results, but your joy should not be. Because your joy should not be determined by the outcome of games, but rather by what is in your heart and soul. Even when we are feeling low because of circumstances, we should still be filled with joy, because our joy comes from God. And it is with joy in our hearts that we should be going out to tell others about the good news of Jesus Christ. It is with this joy that we come together to worship and praise God, even when we do not feel like doing it, because of being unhappy about something. The joy of the Lord leads us to worship Him, as we'll see in the second reading this morning. And actually, when we're feeling down, that is the time to come and worship God and let His joy fill us from within again and just build us up and release that joy through our spirits. Our second reading is the account of the Magi from the East, or the wise men. They've spoken to King Herod in Jerusalem and then been instructed by the chief priests and teachers of the Lord that Christ would be born in Bethlehem, not in Jerusalem where they went. Matthew chapter 2 verses 9 to 11 says, After listening to the king, they went on their way, and behold, the star that they had seen when it rose went before them until it came to rest over the place where the child was. When they saw the star, they rejoiced exceedingly with great joy. And going into the house, they saw the child with Mary his mother, and they fell down and worshipped him. Then, opening their treasures, they offered him gifts, gold and frankincense and myrrh. These wise men or magi, and we don't know how many they are, there are. We tend to say three because there are three different gifts, but that doesn't mean there were just three of them. They had traveled from the east following a star that they had determined indicated that the king of the Jews had been born. And they had come to find him and pay homage to him. They went a little bit off course and ended up in Jerusalem, which logically thinking as the capital city and the seat of the king would be the place for the new king to be born. They had obviously taken their eyes off the star and just followed the well-worn road to Jerusalem. When it was pointed out to them that the Christ child would be born in Bethlehem, they set off for Bethlehem. It's not a long distance between Jerusalem and Bethlehem. Then they saw the star resting over where Jesus was. Now I love the way Mary, um, Matthew describes their reaction to seeing the star once again. He said, they rejoiced exceedingly with great joy. They rejoiced exceedingly with great joy. They were about to encounter the Christ child, the king who they had been seeking because of seeing the special star. There are so many ways that people come to find Christ and receive him as Lord and Savior. I'm sure each one of us here has a different story to tell of our journey to faith in Jesus Christ. Or of the journey that you are still on in your searching, if you're still searching. If you're still searching, today is the day that you can receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. These wise men bowed down before the infant Jesus and worshipped him, because he is worthy of all worship. Then they opened their treasures and they laid their gifts before him. These gifts spoke of who he was and what was to happen to him. But that's a message for another time. These gifts were valuable gifts that they laid before Jesus. Can you imagine the joy in the Magi's hearts as they came into the presence of the king they had been journeying to see? And this wasn't a short journey. This had taken them quite a long time. They were not put off by the circumstances they encountered. Jesus being in a house and not in a palace. They looked beyond that and looked at the Christ child. They didn't just come to see him. They came to worship him and honor him and lay precious gifts before him. 
They carried those precious gifts with them from their homes specifically to lay before him. We all have God-given gifts and talents, but are we willing to lay them before Christ like these wise men did? What gifts have you got that you're willing to lay before Christ today? They don't have to be precious or costly gifts like gold or frankincense or myrrh that the Magi bought. They can be something as simple as helping with the whole setup or as humble as serving tea and coffee, giving someone a lift to church, helping a new believer with the foundations of our faith in Christ, or serving at Grow Baby. We all have gifts and talents, but have we given them over to God to use as He sees fit? Or are we scared that He might ask us to do something that we might find stretching, demanding, or embarrassing? These magi were so full of joy when they found Christ and were able to worship Him and honor Him with their gifts. And we should be likewise, full of joy to worship and serve the one who came to lay down His life for me and for you, so that we could be in a position to bring our gifts to Him and serve Him and His church in the way that God is calling us to do. And just thinking of it, we've got our carols on the streets. You might say, well, I don't have a great voice. And I can't go and sing back there. But you can come along and you can be a blessing by handing out invitations to the people that we encounter and invite them to our carol service the following Saturday. Don't be shy and put off. Don't think, oh, no, I can't do that. It's a simple act, a simple thing to do, to go along Make up those goodie bags as Jill has encouraged you and go and be prepared to give them out and invite people to come along. That's a wonderful way to be able to serve. And even if you have a half-decent voice, come along and sing. Okay, come along and sing. There's a few of us that know that we shouldn't be part of the group singing, but that's a very few of us. Okay, so come and bring your gifts to him and serve him and his church in the way that God is calling you to do. Jesus came to bring joy to the world, as we sang earlier. And we are called and commissioned to do the same by taking the gospel, the good news of Jesus Christ, to those who do not know him as their Lord and Savior and share that good news with them. Okay, let's do it. Let's do that. Let's be prepared to go and share the good news of Jesus Christ. It might be somebody that you're working with. It might be somebody you encounter in, in going into an office or a building. Be prepared and ready to share the good news of Jesus Christ. And it might just be somebody on the street, a chance encounter. If you are here and, are, and you are unable to lay your gifts and talents before Jesus Christ because you've not yet received him as your Lord and Savior, I want to give you an opportunity to do that now. All you need to do is confess with your mouth Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead and you will be saved according to Romans chapter 10 and verse 9. It's to confess with your mouth and believe in your heart. That's all we need to do. And confess Jesus is Lord. If you've come with a friend, confess that, to Je confess that Jesus is Lord to them believing in your heart that God raised him from the dead and that he is alive today and receive him as your Lord and Savior. And then ask your friend to pray with you and for you. So if there's anyone that needs to do that now, please, I just want to give you an opportunity to do it. Okay. Let's finish by looking at the discussion questions. We've got our favorite one up, first up. What stood out to you from this message? And then briefly share your story of coming to faith in Jesus Christ. Thirdly, what gifts or talents do you have that you have laid before Christ to be used to build his kingdom? 
Do you have any that you have not laid before him or are scared to lay before him? Share on that. And then pray for one another. And if you have any prayer needs, just speak to those on the table and get to pray with them. So in the hall here, you can gather around the tables and go through the discussion questions. Those that are online, you'll go on to Zoom now and you can do that in the Zoom meeting.